This is Papa Smurf. You're listening to Our Lifestyle, the podcast with ODB and the mayor. Yo, this is Rob Margie, and you're listening to Our Lifestyle Podcast. Yo, yo, as we get started, we want to thank our title sponsor, Scraping the Coast. You can visit scrapingthecoast.com for more information. Their next event, 22nd Annual, is going to be the last weekend in June. They haven't yet announced it for 2024, but rest assured, we will be out there. One of the biggest, baddest shows in the country. Get ready for more information coming soon on Scraping the Coast. Tap on the hashtag Scraping the Coast for more information. We appreciate the continued support of Custom Car Show Productions. Yo. Yo, you banging it out over there? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, it's always crazy. Always crazy, dog. Yo, yo, yo. Merry holidays. It's ODV from OLP, and we are in the holiday season with a holiday cheer. Biggity Mike the Mayor, was that you over there with some scratchers? Dude, I just finished my scratchers, and guess what? All three of them, not winners, bro. I am not, I'm on this cold streak right now with my scratchers, bro. I don't, I don't get it. But no fear, the holiday season is here, and uh, I see many scratchers in my future. Yep, tell Shannon to get with me, and I'll tell her the right ones to get. Now, in all seriousness, I do want to break in here with some breaking news, and um, this is not easy to share. I do want Uh-oh. to say this at the beginning, Mike, uh, over, you know, this is the holiday season and we typically do not like to have to start a podcast. We typically won't, we'll wait until further in, but it's very, very unfortunate news, Mike, that someone in our scene, someone that I last talked to face to face at mini Nats, uh, which is one of our yep. favorite shows every April was Josh Pascal. And he was a, a beloved member of RA I recall him getting in years ago, several years back. I don't exactly remember the year, but certainly you see how the camaraderie in our scene, uh, our scene knows, you know, no sticker, no club, if you will, because what we've seen is throughout the entire uh, truck scene, there's been uh, everybody posting about, rest in peace, Josh Pascal, and um, I just hate to have to share that with everyone, man. Uh, no, it absolutely, uh, you know, it sucks, uh, to, you know, somebody that's only 37 years old and, uh, you know, somebody, somebody that, you know, so many people, uh, you know, liked and enjoyed, uh, his company and, uh, you know, he, he's no longer here with us. And that's why we talk about all the time, as far as, you know, life's too short, you, you know, you never know. Uh, so, you know, cherish, cherish it, man, because, uh, you never know when, uh, when your time's up. Yeah, it's 1,000, and when I first saw it the other day, I kind of it didn't register. It took me a few hours because I kind of put my phone down, and I looked back later at Facebook, and I kept seeing it, and so many people posted about it. I will tell you uh, what I was trying to say a moment ago is like our kind of scene doesn't know any boundaries, meaning that you know the scene always comes together, and, and that was where my thought was at, but Mike, you know, we've seen in the past Ron Perkins when he owned Hammered Weekend Wear do similar things, but we got to give a lot of love to Tony Moore and, and the team there at Asphalt Army. I just saw a little while ago, I think it was technically on Monday, he posted uh, he had gotten he got had gotten okay from the friends and family, and he's doing a special sticker run. All of the money is going to Josh's family. Uh, you can imagine during this difficult time, and um, from what I saw, is you basically go to Asphalt Army, um, a s p h a l t army dot com, and the stickers, Mike, are five dollars. You'll see it on the front there. It's the Josh Pascal uh, old girl, I believe, is what he referred to as S ten Sonoma as. They're five bucks, and if you order like five of them, the shipping is only one dollar. It doesn't matter how many you order. Uh, yeah. And, uh, Tony, man, stand up guy. And, you know, that, that doesn't surprise me that he would, you know, do something to help, um, raise money, um, you know, for, uh, for Josh's family. Uh, so, you know, like you said, man, it's, it's something that we definitely don't want to, 
uh, think about, talk about, but you know, unfortunately it's a, it's a part of life. And, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely a sad, you know, sad thing. And, uh, you know, and, you know, with that being said, definitely want to give a shout out to, you know, our man, our boy, he, he's been in the hospital. He, you know, he had surgeries and, um, it sounds like, um, after I seen a post the other day, um, he went back in the hospital and, uh, you know, Shane, you know, he's back in the hospital and, you know, definitely want to just let Shane know that, you know, he's, he doesn't want to, you know, he hasn't been answering phone calls or text messages or anything like that. But Shane, if you do listen to this, uh, just l- let you know that you are in our thoughts and our prayers, man. We're, we're thinking about you, buddy. Uh, we hope for a speedy recovery. Yeah, 100%. And I think when we recorded the last time, I don't think that I had seen uh, that he was in there, and of course I did afterwards. It's uh, Shane underscore Andrews underscore on Instagram, uh, Anchors Away, I think was his other Instagram at one point. But of course, you know, no stranger to OLP. Uh, I consider him OLP family. He knows that, uh, and he's a good dude. And it goes back to the message that Mike and I try to send all the time that none of us know, you know, we can be preventive as much as we can, but there's some things in the universe that just, you know, you can't get past, right? It's that life piece. So certainly Shane, I want to let you know, we're thinking of you. We'll give some more shout outs and good vibes later um, on this episode, but I will say this. I just saw it right before we started Jason Bell, you know, his father went in for some surgery. Uh, Jason, of course, is gearing up for the 30th annual Southeast Mini Truck and Nationals, which is every April in Maggie Valley. Of course, you can come get an armband. You can cruise for free in the streets. But his dad, you know, um, I sent good vibes in my head and kind of what I do with my little ritual. And uh, certainly he mentioned that uh, things were looking up. So much love to your pops and everybody out there. It's the holiday season. It's tough. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, as we get going, but Mike, I do want to give a huge shout out again to our title sponsor. You hear it at the top every uh, episode, uh, Scraping the Coast, of course, will be out there in June. It's uh, typically that last weekend in the month of June, and uh, it's a mini truck hall of fame event. Uh, they're in the mini truck hall of fame, and we'll see you out there in Biloxi. Mike, on this episode, though, we basically have somebody that's been on the list a long time, a long time. Negative Camper Florida member Eric Cryan. Huge shout out. Eric is a longtime mini trucker, a guy that's had his hands in a ton of projects, including some of my favorite trucks ever built uh, that he's personally owned and built. Uh, he also, of course, for those that didn't know, uh, Catch 22 will come up. Of course, he had his hands in that, but really just a guy that's been on the list a long time. So, Mike, I would uh, encourage the listeners hang with us here as we get through our normal content. And then we'll give you guys the exclusive with Eric Krein. He took a um, couple minutes away from his busy schedule to sit down with us. So tip of the cap to Eric. Oh, hats off. Because I tell you what, he has built some amazing cars, trucks, interior, sound systems, you name it. The guy has done it. And uh, he's definitely a staple uh, in the scene for a long time. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I've been saving some photos for this moment. I've got some good ones. i got to scan. And we're going to get them out there, Mike, so everyone can see them. Oh, leave it to ODB. You know it. (laughs) The overview of this episode is brought to you by our family at Hammered Weekend, where we tell you time and time again, it's H-A-M-M-E-R-D, weekendwear.com. They have the open enrollment going for next year uh, with the t-shirt subscription, the hoodie subscription, the banner subscription, you name it. If you're like me, maybe you have too many shirts in your closet and you go, man, maybe I need some hoodies because I live up in Alaska. Maybe you need some more banners for some of that truck smut on the garage wall. Uh, of course, you want to hit up H-A-M-M-E-R-D, WeekendWear.com. Mike, the general updates, dude, just want to ask you, bro. I know it's been a couple weeks, but how was Thanksgiving, man? I know you guys usually do kind of a, a bigger shindig. Yeah, no, we, we do our Friendsgiving uh, every year here at the house. And um, we had a total of 23 this year. And, uh, and it was absolutely amazing as always, um, all the, everybody, you know, brings, brings some food and, uh, and we have a good time. I mean, it doesn't get any better than the three F's, man. You got the food, the family and football. I mean, foosball, it doesn't get any better than that, bro. And the deep fried turkey guys, if you've never deep fried a turkey, you got to do it. It is the best way. Um, now 
Oven cooked or deep fried? Which which one do you prefer, uh, ODB? Well, I did deep fry one, and I talked about it recently. It took me forever to get the oil hot. Um, I didn't do it recently, but it was years ago, and uh, I loved it. I need to get better at it, but I tell you what, my mother-in-law, she did something like a 20-some-odd pound turkey in the oven, dude, and it just was so perfect that Here's the crazy thing. You mentioned the stars are aligning. You mentioned 23 guests. I turned the faux five on happy born day for ODB day, which is Thanksgiving this year. Now, I'm not saying it because I want people to tell me happy born day. I'm saying it because it's crazy. Two, three, like Jordan. I came back wearing the faux five like Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Yes, you did. Yes, you did, brother. Yes. And and we did not say you know, um, uh, happy born day to you. So yes, absolutely. Happy, happy born day, my brother. Dude, it's, it's great. And here's the crazy thing. I mean, the stars keep aligning, Mike. I mean, you've never realized this, that your born day, of course, as we know, was on the chronic comes out in nine deuce in nine tray. My born day is when doggy style came out. So we'll talk more about that in a minute, but Mike, I mean, you can't make this stuff up, dude. Well, hey, listen, you, you brought up the chronic and, 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 and I want you to give us some background because obviously it's already been dropped. The pre-orders have been rolling in. People absolutely love this new artwork. How did you come up with this idea? You know, give us, give us some feedback on this idea that you came up with. One, two, three into the four. Miggity Mike the mayor and ODB is at the door. You know, Mike, I love some G-Funk. I love some West Coast. Kind of grew up in it. Big thanks to the big homie, Paul Lane, really got me ingrained in that West Coast vibe, you know, in the late 80s into the 90s. And I bought the album, the CD. This is how old I am. I bought the CD on day one. Back in those days, it was on Tuesday. And of course, Snoop had come out a year prior. And of course, they were saying there was going to be the biggest debut album of all time. I think by like a rapper, but they were also just saying in general. And when the album came out, in those days, I was lucky to have a CD player. I bought a used CD player from our neighbor, and it was one of those like Walkman style ones, you know. And it didn't even have the skip protection, Mike. Like you had to let it, you had to sit it down on a table, and then put the earphones on. <laughs> and I remember listening to it over and over again. And long story short, it's always been one of my favorite albums. And we had some other things in the work, and I started kicking myself. So I was able to work back with Graphic Disorder in time to say, hey, we want to go ahead and kind of move around some of our designs. Nothing had been, um, you know, f- you know, firm yet. You, we had paid for, a, you know, paid for one and we were waiting for another one. So we were ahead of time to be able to go, hey, I want to drop this on the 30th anniversary of Doggy Style. And I had this vision to kind of do something to pay homage to Snoop. Uh, Snoop's cousin, Joe Cool, did the artwork. And long story short, if you guys are listening to this, you got a couple more days. Go on our lifestylepodcast.com. You can pre-order now. We're going to have red or black. We've got banners. We've got hoodies. The larger sizes and things like that, you're going to have to get it on the pre-sale. But, Mike, that's kind of where it came from. Just really the love of you know the album that I have. But you know how we do, man. We try to really connect the... Um, pop culture, you know, the hip hop, whatever you want to call it, but pop culture in general to our designs. And now um, Cliff Josie is now going to be enshrined in the OLP verse. (laughs) Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Welcome. Yeah. And he's a good dude. He's out there slinging packages like many of you guys, depending on the ladies, depending on what you do for a living. He's out there uh, slinging brown boxes, right? What can Brown do for you? And in this case, you know, it was like, what can OLP do for you? And we said, yo, let's post it. I was going to share this later, but Mike, what was cool is I showed, I have a kind of an extension, extensive collection of the doggy style. And sometimes, you know, you feel like you share things and not a lot of people see it, but Snoop saw it or someone from his team. My understanding is he does most of his social media and they reshare hey, it. Let's just go, Jay, yeah. Jay, let's just go with Snoop seen it and Snoop shared it. Snoop shared it. Late the 23rd into the 24th, like overnight, I had passed out from too much turkey, okay? I wake up, 
one of the other collectors that I follow had commented back and he said, yo, I saw Snoop shared your video. And I was like, what? I click on Snoop's Insta, boom, Cliff Josie's truck, you know, of course, is at the end of that. But it still was cool. But it's also a tip of the cap to Brant and Shelly, the owners of Graphic Disorder. And, of course, Eric, right? One of their, what, what I, my opinion, one of the top guns there. We got to tip our cap to them because without them kind of bringing some of our visions to light, even with you guys, with Eastbound Get Town, without those visions coming to light, you know, you, you get to a point where it, it's it's tough to sell stuff, right? And like Brian always said, man, the artwork is going to help push your product or your brand. And certainly it did this time. Snoop hopefully saw the end of the video. I, of course, I know he did because he would have cut it out. You know what I'm saying? If he thought we were trying to diss him with with a Toyota. <laughs> I love what you do for me, Toyota. And then you got to jump in the air. We're going to have to get Cliff Josie jumping in the air. That's it. With his legs up, holding the shirt in front of his truck. What do you think? Dude, now that, that that's some artwork right there, brother. Yeah, if we could get... Uh, Toyota to tweet it. I would say tweet, but now it's called X. So do I say? Yeah, do we get them to still, exit? I don't know. That sounds that's the dumbest filthy. thing. That sounds yeah, filthy. exactly. That's the dumbest thing ever, dude. It's still Twitter. It's always going to be Twitter. I don't care what they sit there and talk about X this and X that and blah blah blah. It's always going to be Twitter. I saw I saw something on your phone though, and I thought it was like XXX, and I was like, I didn't think Mike was on Twitter, but. I don't know. That was Shannon said, don't worry about it. I was like, I don't know what that means. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what that means either. I don't know. I don't know. Well, wasn't it a movie? Wasn't the guy from Fast and Furious in a movie called Triple X? Yeah, that? that's it. Oh, that's that was it. it. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep, See, that's what it out. was. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for looking out. <laughs> yeah, so Mike, get this. Last thing. So eleven twenty three, my pack wins. We beat the rivals. We were underdogs, so we win. Snoop retweets the video, repost, whatever. We launched the new artwork featuring Cliff Josie's Yoda. People love it. All I got to say is it was a good day, and I had to blast some ice cubes, so that's where we're at. Well, not only did you have a good day there, but then you also took a trip and went out to Daytona, man. Tell us a little bit about that. Daytona was a blast. It Technically, my understanding was it was the 50th anniversary of of the Turkey Daytona Turkey Run, which we all call, if you're a native Floridian, it's the Turkey Rod Run. And it's a Thursday through Sunday deal. I win on Saturday. Every year I say I'm going to stay longer. Jimmy's Rod and Customs open house, uh, what they call the shop night on Saturday night. That's, of course, in conjunction with um, John Turner, Big Juice, from Trucks and Cheeseburgers slash You Ain't Low Trucks. That was unreal. A lot of people, the biggest one I've seen. Now, I did not get a chance to go last year, but I will say this, Mike. I know there's a local guy. His name's Dallas. He's a super nice guy. A lot of these kinfolk, you know, it's no particular club or whatnot, but it's a lot of friends. They get together, and they get a good spot at the Daytona Turkey Rod Run. So I'm looking forward to maybe uh, dovetailing into that. I mentioned it to Dallas. He said, yo, it's an open invite. I tell you, Mike, just getting inside, I walked underneath the track. You know, the sights, the smells, the food. Uh, it was a little overcast, so it wasn't blazing hot. Like, it just it had everything. And I, and I kind of just realized that day, walking around by myself, that, you know, this is why I love, like, the car and hot rod community. You know, Diener's out there, Low Bros, Fatty B. You got classic trucks, tons of wagons, Lincolns. It's got a little bit for everyone, and I want to kind of ingrain myself more in that event as we go forward. So that's it. No, it sounds like it. You know, every year it's it's a good, it's a, always a good time. It's always a good turnout. And uh, I mean, from the pictures and the videos, you know, make sure you guys are checking out our lifestyle the podcast because uh, ODB over there definitely posted up some cool ass videos. So uh, definitely go and check those out, and uh, you can see uh, some of the cool things that uh, ODB got to see. No doubt, and I tell you what, the thing at Jimmy's Run of Customs, you know, Jimmy recently lost his father, and I wasn't sure how that was going to maybe impact the event. Knowing Jimmy, it was still going to go on, and it did, and it was cool to see so many people out there, so many different clubs, you know, past customers, current customers, just people in general that, 
maybe you're from out of town and they cruised over there. I know Avenue Classics brought by the Barthmobile, the big kind of RV, which was super cool. But, you know, Shulman was out there. Two, a couple of our favorite people, Jenna Lee and Scott, Mike Hill, Daniel Smith, just tons of people. And it was super cool to slap hands and just kind of chat. Um, the one homie that remember the gentleman in the wheelchair every year at Lone Star Throwdown, he comes by and he buys merchandise, dude. Yeah, he's from Minnesota. Yeah, he's from Minnesota. And I see, like, yeah. I see him, and then I kind of turn around, and I'm like, I know him. And I turn around, and he was talking to his girl, who he's been dating, and uh, it's Dan. And Dan, uh, he, he was telling her, like, I know that guy. And I go, hey, man, I know you. And I looked at his face, and I go, man, I know you from Lone Star. I'm like, what are you doing out here? And he kind of told me this whole story, this epic road trip he's been on. He found the girl that was there that he's been dating now for – I think better part of a half a year or so. He said things are going good for him. Oh, good deal. Yes. No, he, uh, he shit that I think it's been every year since we've set up at uh, Lone Star. He's always come out and supported us. Oh, yeah. And get this Joe and Marlene from Branded Streets. They were there yes. all the way up from Illinois. And I brought I up, you know me, pop culture. I bring up the Home Alone house because I know it's in that greater Chicago land. And they're like, oh, yeah, we were there last week. I was like, Damn. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. So good people. But Mike, the general updates is brought to you by our kinfolk at Rose Metalworks slash spreading the love. They're out there doing great things for the truck scene. Thanks for what you guys do. And uh, we continue to want to see what they're, uh, we, we love to continue to see what they're doing in the scene. So Mike, next we got the trivia with Miggity Mike the Mayor, and I got one question. Are you ready? Are you ready? Hell yeah, brother. Let's do this. Now it's time to get serious. Now, a quick update. Last week, we did do a video. Was it two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, we did a video episode. Now, we are going, we're going to continue those going forward. We're just getting caught up with some of the audio in the can, to, um, in the can, so to speak. Starting next year, for the most part, and maybe with our best ofs at the end of this year, we'll continue those video episodes. So the video will be exclusive on our YouTube channel. The audio, of course, will continue to be available on YouTube if that's how you want to consume it, or via uh, however you listen. But Mike. So unfortunately, we do not have video evidence this time, but we're going to take um, your best word for it. Many people love this movie. I like it a lot. It's not my favorite Christmas movie, but that doesn't take anything away from it. It is a classic, not a cult classic, Mike. So don't try to whittle oh. it down. Don't try to whittle it down. But many, all right, all right. many of you love this movie, Elf. Okay. And I'm just going to oh, see, because yes. I know supposedly you and Shannon like this one. Uh, and so I want to see if you can finish this famous line. And oh, jeez. Now, give everyone a second. If you do know it, Mike, give everyone a second, because the Joey Whitby's out there. You know what I mean? They'll start. He's almost got his dash out at this point, because I know he's been slammed. He's been pounding the fist, dude. And uh, so we want to give everyone at home uh, a chance. But the So finish this line. The best way to spread Christmas cheer is the best way to spread Christmas cheer is oh, man. And I remember he's sitting, he's sitting down because he's wanting his dad to give do something with him. I shit, bro. I don't uh, is to buy, 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 buy. No, give, man. give, 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 give. Come on, man. Oh, bro, I don't know. I don't know the answer, man. See, this is where Scotty. Scotty's so much better than I am. See, Scotty. And hats off. Yeah. Hats off to Scotty the body, man. What a filling in. And man, it's, there's no comparison, bro. He he knocked it out of the park. Him and Jay Church last week absolutely killed it. And here I come on here and sound like a fool because I have no idea, dude. Well, here's the thing. Jenna Lee's texted me afterwards and said, "Yo." She's already got a new podcast, I think, lined up for Scott and I. You know what I mean? And I said, well, Jenna Lee, we've already got this built over here. We just boot Mike to the side because he doesn't want to do it anyways, and then we're good to go. 
There we go. See, and it's all set and ready to rock and roll. It's singing loud for all to hear. The best ah, way to they're... spread Christmas cheer is singing loud yes. for all to hear. That's when they were trying to get the damn um, the uh, the sled to work. Yeah. Right? Wasn't yeah. it like they had to have the, the cheer? And, and yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. And if you guys haven't seen on Netflix, check out the the Christmas movies that made us or whatever version of that where they do the movies that made us. But I think that one season is the Christmas movies. It's pretty cool. It's crazy to think like when you go back and watch that Netflix episode about Elf, like they edited that movie like on a home Mac computer. It's like crazy to think that, I don't know, it's just mind blowing. I did not know that. Yeah, it was crazy. They were talking about, because there was some controversy about the, the final edit of the film. And I think the director was like putting his heels in the ground and they're like, no, you need to change such and such. And then you have to watch the Netflix thing. It's pretty cool. But the trivia with Miggity Bike the Mayor this week is brought to you by The Spark Show, one of our favorite shows out there, thesparksshow.com, every August in Sevierville, Sevierville, Tennessee, where currently the biggest Buckies in the world is located. That's every August, thesparkshow.com, one of the biggest, baddest shows in the country. So what makes that the biggest and baddest uh, Buckies? Well, is it, it the amount? Of, is it the amount of of um gas station you know pumps or is it just how big the uh, actual store is in itself well there's a rumor that cousin eddie rolled up in in the, in the rv and he tried every shiz it or out and oh. it did not fill up and he said hey it's the biggest one. Oh, okay all right we'll see uh, this is why i asked because i knew you had the answer <laughs> well, i did apparently, not know that as soon as they announced that was the biggest one florida said hold our liquid death water and we're coming for you so my understanding is the ocala one that's currently in the works is uh is going to be the biggest and baddest in the world but you know mike they're they're looking to topple each other well of course i mean you, you can't just settle for uh being you know second best you got to go for you got to go for the big dog oh yeah so mike odb or miggity mike the mayor live and uncut i just want to say this dude and you said it earlier the holidays are here. I would encourage people, depending on your job or your career, you know, take a little bit of time off, even if it's a day to spend with the family. Obviously, most people are going to be closed on Christmas, and you know, depending on where you work, you might have an extra holiday in or whatnot. Some of you guys might have the whole week off. Who knows? But certainly, with the message that we've been trying to send here, you know, take. I would encourage people take time off. Do what makes you happy. If that's if you've got a family and you're looking to spend time with them, do that. And also, Mike, like with uh, Jeff Davey coming on, New Year's coming up. Get your checkups, guys. I'm serious, man. You know, you think about the health and well-being. And again, we put so much time and effort into our trucks, waxing, painting, cleaning, detailing, polishing billet, doing all that stuff. Let's do some preventive maintenance on ourselves, right, Mike? And I know you've been getting some good word from your doctors and you've even, Mike, for you to back down a little bit off of some sweet tea, right? That's saying, I mean, that's like you, Mike, flexing a flexing your muscles, telling you know Scotty the body that you wrestle them to the ground. Well, bro, I mean, sweet tea, Mountain Dew, and you know, just from stopping and drinking those damn you know soda, sweet tea, and uh, really cut back on um, on the sweets. I'm not going to sit here and say that I've completely cut it out because uh, I love me some damn um, ice cream. Um, but, uh, dude, I've dropped 10 pounds. Dude. Because of it. So, yeah, dude, it's, it's, it, and it was easy uh, because the last time I actually had a Mountain Dew is we were at um, uh, Cruising with the Cruisers. And the damn barbecue guy that was right next, that was set right set up next to Harvey and the driven booth, all he had left was Mountain Dew. And I was like, oh, man, I really need something to drink. And uh, I was trying to get a water, and that's all he had. So I, I started, I took a, a, you know, I was like, all right, I'll drink it. Well, you know, whatever. I haven't had one in forever. And, dude, it doesn't even, doesn't even taste good anymore. Uh, it's so damn sweet. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely easy to do, man. It's, it, it was not hard. I thought it was going to be a lot harder than what it was. Remember George McFly said, if you put your mind to it, 
You can accomplish anything. And I truly believe that, Mike. I truly do. We'll talk more about that in the next episode. ODB Live and Uncut brought to you by Joey at Get Decked. So many of you, including Craig Braid and all the sitting pretty kinfolk up in the Pacific Northwest, are getting with Joey Dilworth at Get Decked. It's Get Decked underscore VA for Virginia on Instagram or Joey Dilworth, just how it sounds on Facebook. Hit him up for your skate deck needs for 2024. So many of these shows, we know K Dog trafficked over a hundred of these across state lines to Lone Star Throwdown last year to help out the LST fam. And I'm telling you, the skate decks are what people want. Order some if you think that that's going to be a good thing for your show. And Mike, you could also, if people wanted to do like a kind of an insane top 10, you know, maybe they could do that. Many of us take those awards and we kind of just put them wherever. But having a skate deck that would maybe be like a top 10 award, that would be something people want to keep and hang on the wall. Oh, dude, uh, forget about top 10, man. Those damn things, that's those, bro. Come on. That's what I'm saying, dude. Hut 1, Hut 2, Hut 3, Hut. Biggity Mike the Mayor always coming for your gut or something like that. I don't know. I was trying to think. How you throw? How about page. Miggity Mike the Mayor trying to get rid of his gut? How about that, dude? Bro, we got you. Okay, <laughs> so you're out of this. Um, the writer's block you told me you had for the album. Man, let's get you back in it, dude. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> let's get you back in this. Oh shit! I did save a few things that I wanted to mention, and th- there weren't um, there weren't a lot of things that I had saved. Uh, in terms of the scene, I did want to remind everyone that uh, Garage Gear Clothing, Mike, they continue to go to just unbelievable shows around the country. I think they were just at the um, Houston Autorama. But, Mike, we got to give a tip of the cap, man. Like, I asked if you would buy their old trailer so I could borrow. But, dude, their new trailer, did you see that new neon sign they have in that thing, dude? They basically yeah. said, dude, we're coming – I mean, dude, they could go to, like, a concourse show and rep in that nice trailer. Absolutely, man. I tell you what, they uh, they definitely know what's up. And, and not only that, but don't they also offer free shipping? They do, and I do believe they have free shipping now on orders of $100 or more. And I know some people go, man, that's, you know, maybe that's out of my budget, but that's four shirts, right? They have hoodies, T-shirts, hats, accessories, They've got it all, and if you don't want to do the shipping, again, they're at these shows nationwide, and I tell you what, Mike, one of my favorite designs is the Garage Gear Clothing Van. I think it's an international metro van, and I tell you what, I saw an awesome one at the Turkey Rod Run that had diesel wheels on it. Shout out to Frank, and the vans and the wagons, and they have both of them, and they're all on their merch. You just got to go under t-shirts at garagegearclothing.com. Hey, I'm, I'm on it right now. I don't have many scene updates for this week. I'm going to cover a couple things here as we get um, through the rest of this episode. We're going to try to keep this portion a little bit short so we can get you guys to the interview, but we want to thank Garage Gear Clothing for the continued support. Uh, Mike, the industry news, I did want to mention this. This was kind of interesting. Some of you may have seen, if you do watch TV around Thanksgiving, uh, Chevrolet had a pretty cool ad, and it was a classic Chevy Suburban featured in a touching holiday to remember ad. Uh, GMAuthority.com, they wrote a little article on it. And uh, the video features a classic Suburban touching uh, with a touching storyline about a family reunion. And it's cool to me that they do these throwback. Um, I really dig it. I think it really kind of gets to the heart of, you know, the America and many of us that grew up with these awesome rides. I I wish that cars looked a little bit different these days, but Mike, I'm not a designer and I don't think I'm going to have any kind of uh, say in like what the new blazer looks like or anything, but unfortunately it is what it is, right? (laughs) It definitely does not look like it used to. That's for damn sure. Oh yeah. Now, Mike, the industry updates is brought to you by, have you heard of this show? Um, It's something about Freak, the the Freak Nick, or what's it called? The Freak? Oh, that's funny. That's funny that you bring that up, because uh, because I actually just got done talking to Trip, uh, uh, Trip Shoot, the promoter for Freaking Weekend, and and, uh, they're getting ready to open up their pre-registration 
And with their pre-registration, you're going to get, you know, your beach starter pack. I mean, it comes with a koozie. It comes with a, a cooler. It comes with a uh, sunglasses. And uh, shoot, what was the third thing? There's four things. A SWAT fest ticket? Yes. Oh, and the passes to the beach party. And you can't miss it, bro. Dude. I tell you what, you know, he's a little younger because, I mean, Mike, you and I are getting old. I'll speak for myself. I just turned the faux five. But, you know, he's a little younger, dude, and he has really got, I, you know, I don't tip my cap all the time to these great social media guys out there. I know his Instagram's on the rise, which is the freaking, with an I-N, weekend show. But, dude, he is really grabbing people's attention with some of these awesome posts he's doing. Oh, he definitely <laughs> His uh, his posts are uh, are definitely something else. That's for damn sure. We may need him to help him. help us a little bit because I tell you what, like some of these man, they get my attention. Like he had one that I was like, man, dude, little you know. He, I think he he see what what Trip has been hearing is he's been hearing about Smut Fest, and I think he's trying to kind of dovetail in some of it so he can get on. He wants to get on the Smut Fest bandwagon. You know what I mean? Who Mike? Who doesn't? Oh, dude, he could he could be fucking like. Uh, a uh, smut bandit, you know, he could be the captain of the smut bandit team. Right, he could have one of those like fisherman ha- or uh, the captain hats on with the little anchor deal, and I think he could lead the ship in the port for smut fast. You know what I mean? Like like a Gasparilla. <laughs> <laughs> I could see him out there doing it. But we're gonna be at the freaking weekend show. It's September twentieth through the twenty second of next year. So for many of us uh, in Florida, it's still summer. And really in the South, it still is. So like you said, Mike, pack your bathing suits and get ready. I've always thought it would be cool to have like a hardcore spring break type feel at a show. And my understanding is this is it. And the cool thing is it's so warm down there in the South. We'll be able to swim and swan dive and whatever they'll let us do at the pools. You know what I mean? But obey all local, uh, what do you call those things, placards? You know what I mean? If you're not allowed to swan dive, don't do it. <laughs> well, get ready because they're getting ready to release. Um, when I did talk to him, they were talking about how he's getting ready to release all the information about the hotel as far as um, pricing. And, and uh, so, you know, just, just be prepared because uh, it's coming here. It's coming, coming soon. More info. So stay tuned. Make sure you're following, uh, you know, freaking weekend page and, and trip and so on and so forth. So you can keep up to date. Oh, yeah. Okay, so next I want to just mention, Mike, there's not a lot of shows left for the year. We've hit a lot of these. Now, I apologize. I continue to mention this one. Uh, Severed in the Southwest. So Severed Ties underscore AZ on Instagram. If you guys and ladies are anywhere near Arizona, please note every year the first weekend in December is Severed in the Southwest. Uh, I know Switch Suspension is the title sponsor. They're good people. Um, you're going to see Sever Ties, the main page, as well as Sever Ties AZ continue to post. Please, if you can, go out to that event. It's very affordable. It's a one-day show. I've been there. It's been 10 years this year that I, that I've, um, that I went. And, uh, Mike, I know that show is, um, is on the rise. And I think technically, I say on the rise – but it's the longest running show in Arizona, and that's a huge tip of the cap to my Severtized brothers and sisters. Yes, sir. And I know one year, ODB and the mayor are going to make it out there. Oh, yeah. Now, in addition to that, again, there's not a lot of shows left. I just want to hit upon these last couple, and then I'll, I'll, we have a big reminder for you guys for next year. So uh, we have the grand finale, which is the 8th, 9th, and 10th. That's the following weekend, uh, so December 8th, 9th, and 10th. You have the Toy Drop Auto Show, which is the 9th. That's at Lake Square Mall in the greater Orlando area. I'll be at Rides by the River the third Saturday in Tampa on the 16th for anybody that wants to meet up and do that. But, Mike, we're not going to plug the lights in right now. We are going to say next year. The 12th, 13th, and 14th, one of the biggest and baddest shows on the Eastern Seaboard. You know what I'm talking about, Miggity Mike. Well, I'm going to guess that you're talking about Eastbound Get Down. Am I correct? 
Yes, sir. And my understanding, if they listen to this, if they're day one listeners, they got to get in because they've got T minus a couple of hours, right? Well, as of right now, um, uh, pre registration is supposed to end on December 1st. And uh, so it, it's going so damn well. I, kept t- I keep let's telling pu- them that. Let's we push should. it out like till at least the fourth, dude. Well, that's what I keep trying to tell, you know, Shannon and, and, and Kim that we should push it out a little bit because, man, it's, it's, it's going really well. And, you know, I made quite a few posts today and we got quite a few freaking more uh, pre-registrations today. So if the girls are going to allow me to do it, I'm going to extend it out. But we'll see. Um, but, guys, uh, definitely would love to have you guys. Destination Daytona there in Ormond Beach, Florida. It's the world's largest um, Harley Davidson dealership. The host hotel, which is on property, is sold out right now. Um, we do have another host hotel, but basically, guys, just go to eastboundgetdownshow.com and you can find all your information uh, right there. Or follow us on Instagram, follow us on um, on Facebook. Uh, you know, just look up Eastbound Get Down Show, and uh, and you'll be able to find find it, and you can you can get all your information you need, or just reach out to me, and uh, and I'll get you taken care of, not a problem. Uh, but we definitely look forward to seeing all you guys. Um, you know, we want to thank you know Big Jeff Audio for coming on as our um, uh, title sponsor this year. Uh, we actually we just just got. Um, uh, AccuWare uh, signed up, so AccuWare will be in the house, and uh, so you know Eastbound Get Down powered by AccuWare, so you can't go wrong there. Uh, so we definitely uh, thank those guys, and of course Rogue Audio, uh, Lowrider Depot, and uh, um, and uh, Stingray Chevrolet. You know, are all of our big sponsors. Um, so definitely look forward to it, and uh, we hope you guys can uh, come out and join us. And Sinners and Saints Friday night pre-party brought to you by the kinfolk at? Uh, the Atlantic Truck Meet, man. Uh, definitely, you definitely want to go and check out that that show uh, there in, in uh, you know, the boardwalk in Atlantic City, uh, you know, first weekend of June. Um, but uh, Mark and, and his and his guys will be there at the show, and they they sponsored you know the pre party on Friday night right there on property. Uh, you 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 can't miss it. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be a damn good time. We're going to have the cornhole uh, board competition going on, and uh, you know the corn toss as uh, as ODB would call it. So you don't want to miss that. And uh, uh, you know of course DJ Mays will be there. Yeah, I can't wait. Can't wait, Mike. And I'll tell you what, tip of the cap to DJ Mays. I know I've been busy and I haven't got a chance to jump on Twitch. But if you guys do, do me a favor. Download Twitch and search DJ Mays Radio. You'll get a notification when he goes live. And it's just a good vibe. It's free music. You can kind of chime in if you want. If I watch on Apple TV, I can't type on that. So, you know, sometimes we'll have it on our phone going. Sometimes the Apple TV, the computer, however you consume the content. But Twitch and search DJ Mays Radio. Mike, also eastboundgetdownshow.com. I'm seeing hats and some of the older stickers and some of that other stuff, as low as 50 cents for stickers, as low as 10 bucks for hats. I would also encourage people, one of the coolest things that Mike does, uh, and Mike, John, and the entire team, is they offer wristbands ahead of time. So if you want to not worry about having cash or however you're going to do it, just go on eastboundgetdownshow.com and you can order um, the wristbands. That way, Mike, you can walk in like basically like a boss with your arms swinging. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. And because uh, they are day of show, uh, $20 for the weekend um, right now on the website. And it'll be up there until until showtime. Uh, they are $15. $15 make you hollow. The show updates brought to you by our kinfolk at Local Rides with a Z Mag. This is an awesome magazine, Local Rides, R-I-D-E-Z, magazine.com. Hit them up. They have a new issue out. They are great people. Uh, they have some on sale right now as low as uh, 10 bucks. So go out there. It's Local Rides, R-I-D-E-Z, magazine.com. Good folks, and uh, we appreciate all of their support. Mike, in lieu of the podcast updates this week, I just want to um, throw a couple more Airhead Nation updates out there. Um, and the big one is this. Look, man, one of our biggest supporters and just a great guy, part of the 
Garage Gear clothing team, part of the Lone Star Throwdown team, and of course, the man behind the West Coast influence, Radar, I did see, unfortunately, that his mom passed away, and I want to send much love to the big homie. Uh, He posted uh, Joan uh, Hendricks. She passed away on the 21st. She was born in 1921, or excuse me, 1941, uh, in December of 1941. So may she rest in peace, and um, our thoughts and prayers are with you, our brother. Um, There's... There's a lot going on in the world right now. Um, I know John, uh, a guy by the name of uh, Johan Slush, S-L-U-S-S, Slush. I'm probably saying that wrong. I apologize. He passed away. Um, Brian Garrett had posted, and um, everybody say rest in peace to the homie. Uh, Mike, you know, it's the holiday season, and I know a lot of people, you know, sometimes struggle because they, they could have challenges, you know, with their family or with health and things like that. And I just encourage people, you know, if you're in a in a dark place, uh, you know, reach out to family, friends, uh, reach out to Mike or I if you have to. Uh, there's always help. And, of course, you know, if you're ever in a situation that you feel like, you know, um, that, that things are just at the end, you know, always, I, I said this many years ago, you know, reach out to the suicide prevention hotline, whatever you got to do. Uh, now, of course, I'm not drawing that conclusion on any one we talked about just now. I'm just saying that, of course, in general, Mike, I know the, the holidays can be a great time for us. They can be a challenging time for others. So much love and respect to everybody. Do what's best for you and your family. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely, brother. Uh, podcast update slash Airhead Nation brought to you by Graphics Mafia. Finally, Buddy has continued to um, post on Instagram, G-R-A-P-H-I-X Mafia.com. If you need signs or door advertisements or stickers, club decals, you name it, hit up graphics with an X Mafia.com. Mike, the last one we got for you is we got another question that came in. On the uh, Eastbound Get Down FAQ, Mike, and uh, you know some of these guys think you know they they you know they they, they say that you can't make this stuff up, and I totally agree. <laughs> Let's hear it. This ought to be good. I mean, this guy he he said he wants to know if there's any way, and I should have asked Rob Seeley because Rob is one of the judges, right? I saw him at at uh, Jimmy's Run and Customs Stick. Yes, sir. This guy, and I know this is kind of a far fetched one, but he he said, "Hey, I'd like to talk to Mike Murray and team if there's any way." I could schedule a conference call with the judges prior to the show. I want to get a sense for what they're going to be looking for to score my truck. I want to know. Um, I think I'm going to be in the domestic wild class, which I don't think he knows that there's not going to be classes. Uh, he he <laughs> did say his show t- his tires are also show mounted, but the valve stems are on the back, and he wants to make sure that you guys are going to have mirrors to be able to check all that. So I told him, I said, you know, we'll get right back, Mike. We'll get right back to him. You know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. And hey, whoever that was, um, you know, John Smith, I'll go with John Smith. Yeah. Uh, you can have as much time with those judges as you need. Okay. As long as you get there on Friday. Okay. And, uh, you know, before the show, and then you can, you can go from top to bottom with that, with, with your vehicle and, uh, they'll give you the lowdown on what they're looking for. And, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll pick your, pick your vehicle apart. How about that? Well, I got the typewriter right here, and I'm actually going to type him a note and send it in the mail just to keep it old school, Mike. What do you think? I mean, you hear the typewriter. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing it right now. Eastbound Get Down FAQ brought to you by the kinfolk at CNS Motorworks. If you want to bag your car, you need air suspension components like AccuAir. It's C underscore S underscore Metalworks with an S. Again, CS Metalworks. Hit up Chris Burns and team at CNS Metalworks. Again, Eastbound Get Down Show, do not miss out, man. This show is building a lot of steam, Mike, and I tell you what, I always have a blast, and I love, even though we joke around a lot, I love that it kind of cools down a little bit. You know, people often say, man, Mike should have had the show in July, and we kind of laugh, and we go, you do know we're talking about Florida. Mm -hmm. January is a fantastic, beautiful time in the state of Florida, and we hope that you can come out. There's plenty of restaurants to eat around there. There's plenty to do. There's plenty to gallivant around. Stay on the property if you want. But, Mike, it's Eastbound Get Down Show, right? Dot com. Yes, sir. And, uh, hey, and guys, there there's going to be a special appearance made by ODB himself. He's already got a spot. I'm just – I can't wait to see Bada Bing there at 
eastbound get down. What do you all think? Scott keeps talking about some rumor about the being or whatever, and I said, yeah, the U.S. government has finally acknowledged uh, UFOs. So that's what we're calling them now, the beings. So, oh, Mike, shit. much love to you and Shannon. Stay on the rise, everyone. Rest in peace to Josh. We miss you, homie. Please go to asphaltarmy.com and order some stickers. It's only a dollar shipping. And without further ado, we're going to roll into Eric Ryan's audio. Mike, take care, brother. And everyone, have a safe couple of weeks, and we'll hit you soon with our next episode. Peace. Hey, so like I said, I'm super excited to sit down with Eric Cry, and, and I just wanted to say, Eric, thanks for taking the time to sit down with OLP. No problem at all, man. appreciate you having me. Yeah, for sure, man. Do you mind just sharing a little bit of background about yourself? I assume I kind of know you grew up maybe in Florida, but maybe can you set the record straight? Yeah, uh, originally I'm from Massachusetts, but I mean, my family moved here when I was maybe two, so the reality is I've been a, a South Florida resident my entire life, so... I've, uh, I've lived in, in, uh, West Palm beach, you know, Palm beach County, my, my whole life. So this is, uh, this is where I've called home forever. So. Yeah. I couldn't imagine living anywhere where there's snow. I'm sure you feel the same way. No, no, no. When it, when it gets below 60, I, uh, I start crying. So <laughs> I hear you now. Here's one thing that I never knew is how did you get involved in like the mini truck world? Like I met you, I think in 97, and I assume that you've always, like many of us, you got bit by the bug. But what's the real story? Well, I mean, as you already know, I'm, I'm in the, you know, I'm in the car audio business. And um, honestly, man, like growing up in, in West Palm Beach, there used to be a spot uh, in Lake Worth where everybody used to go. And this was like in the early 90s to mid 90s. Um, Lake Worth Beach, and it was unreal in that era. I mean, it was like probably a solid six, seven miles of bumper to bumper, and it was just loaded with mini trucks and imports and, you know, all the stuff from that era with, you know, graphicked out little trucks and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I can remember being 14, 15 years old going there with, uh, with my buddies that had cars and, you know, it was just, uh, it, it grabbed me, man. Like that's, that's pretty much what, what got me into it. Just seeing all the different stuff people were doing and, you know, and then, uh, at the age of 15, I started working at a car stereo shop and, you know, we'd be working on some of these cars and, and seeing the stuff. I mean, granted, I was the guy sweeping the floors in the beginning, but, you know, I was still seeing all the stuff and, uh, and it, it just, it's, uh, you know, it definitely, definitely caught my attention and, you know, when I was able to afford the stuff, I, uh, you know, I jumped on in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of crazy because if you think back to the late 80s into the 90s with, like, Vanilla Ice, and then, you know, you had, we had a DJ Magic Mike, and then you had, if you go on Spotify or Apple Music and you start looking at these playlists of, like, Miami Bass and things like that, that whole era, you know, we had a lot of stuff going for us. And if you were a type of person, like you said, that cruised some of the spots or you had a buddy like I did that had a drop-top Mustang – it was like we'd put the top down and cruise out, and it didn't matter that it was stock. It just was a good time. Yeah, I mean, that, that era in Lake Worth Beach, I mean, like you were just talking about the, you know, all the, the uh, base guys and everything, and, man, it, like, you know, it, a couple nights a week you'd see the power supply van there. There was another dude that had an Orion van, you know, so you'd see all that stuff there, and it was just – it was killer, you know. So, I, I, like, very, very cool stuff growing up to see, and, you know, now there there isn't a whole lot of that stuff – now but man it was just crazy back then so oh yeah now i want to talk about your peach s10 that i when i first met you in 97 uh briefly yep. but i think you had told me one time before that you did have a mazda that predated that what happened there so i had multiple mazdas before that um you know when i when i i think when i was like i think i got my first mazda when i was like 17 years old i had a 89 b2200 extra cab and, uh, you know, just seeing all the trucks around, you know, it was instantly slammed it and put some Pathfinder wheels on it and, you know, had it as low as it could possibly go without spending any money at all. So, oh, you know, yeah. it rode like crap. It rode like crap. The only suspension it had was the tire at that point. But, you know, I, I thought it was cool. And, uh, 
you know, uh, that one lasted me about a year. And then, uh, you know, at that point I was, you know, just starting to get a job where I made a little bit of money. And, uh, after a while I just decided, man, it was time for a new truck. And I started searching for the last year of the, the V series, like that 2200, 2600 body style. I found a, uh-huh. I literally drove for every weekend. I would just get on the road and go all the buy here, pay here lots until I found a 93 extra cab 2600i. And uh, that was like my, at the time, my, my dream truck. So found one that had, you know, not that they had a lot of options, but, you know, it had every option in a two wheel drive at that point and uh, bought it and brought it home and just transferred everything from my, 89 over to that truck and then uh that's that's where it started you know that truck we went you know first week i had it i dropped it off at a body shop and shaved the emblem shaved the antenna and uh you know did a uh side swing tailgate and then a roll pan and you know then uh did the stereo in it and you know down here i mean you already know daytona is a a big deal and one of the uh, one of the manufacturers that we dealt with at the stereo shop I worked at, you know, offered to sponsor me. So Soundstream sponsored the truck and I, uh, I wanted to go a little over the top with it. So I dropped it off and had the whole bed sheet metaled out and did a few other things to it. I've, it's been so long. I don't remember everything I did to it, but, uh, we did, uh, hydraulics on the truck to make it lay frame. And that was my first real custom truck i would say like my first mazda was mild you know it was just a lowered stock truck that was kind of cool for the for the time but then the the teal mazda got a little little heavy and then uh yeah that truck got stolen so after it was yeah after it got stolen that's uh that's when uh bobby at mad mods had the the s10 that he had built it was just kind of sitting off to the side in his carport and it was starting to look a little rough and uh he had it for sale for cheap i grabbed it and uh you know fortunately paint and body was already done to it and you know a couple things needed to be repaired but nothing crazy so we fixed all that stuff up and drove it was already it already had hydraulics it didn't quite lay frame but it, it was low had a c-notch nothing crazy and uh you know the front was it was really close to laying frame on 17 inch billets uh, when I bought it from him, it didn't come with the wheels and he wanted all his hydraulics out of it. So I immediately took the truck to, to Frank at Reds in Miami, dropped it off, had him do a all new hydraulic setup. And then a couple weeks later, brought it back, had him do, well, actually, uh, I guess you, you and I met. Was the truck already body dropped when when we met? Yeah, I think it was because it had um it, it had the barbed wire um graphic on it. Had the graphics on it. You had like the composite so, headlights and stuff. Yeah, so back and forth a little bit. Um, when I bought the truck from Bobby, it didn't have the it didn't have the blazer uh, grill and headlights on it. Um, it did have that Eclipse bubble in the hood, and he had modified the the front bumper for the uh the bumper lights were I want to say they were just like round rather than the the over, you know, the, the, I guess, rectangular shape ones. Yep, yep. And, um, literally bought the truck from him two weeks before slam fest and took it down to reds, bought a set of 17 inch welds, uh, staggered billets for it and put all new hydraulics in it, did a stereo in it and brought it to slam fest. Yeah. And it looked and damn good, was, man. Yeah, it was. I was happy with it then, and then uh, some things took place at Slam Fest where uh, somebody made a comment to me, and uh, that was that was not, you know, probably not the right thing for my pocket. But uh, you know, I, at that time period, I didn't want to hear anybody. So I, uh, as soon as I got home, I dropped the truck off back at Reds. Well, first I took the hood off the truck, dropped it off to Dave at Glass Act to do graphics on it. And then I dropped the truck back off at Reds and had him fully body drop the truck, and uh, that was kind of a that was kind of a, a trickle down on that one. It, it it got a little out of hand, and uh, the truck sat in the shop for 
a long time and uh, I ended up getting it back maybe three weeks before Slam Fest the next year, which is when you and I met. Ah. And uh, I it was uh, it was crunch time. Basically, got the truck back and put it all together. And uh, yeah, that was that was how you saw it. So it was you know body drops. The graphics were done on the hood. I finished the interior. And uh, funny thing about it, day before Slam Fest. Somebody, an old man rolled into the shop that I worked at, saw the truck sitting outside and made me an offer. I couldn't refuse to sell the truck. Wow. So literally at slam fest, I didn't even own it. Um, you know, I just told him, look, I, I won't let the truck, I wouldn't even sell the truck. And, uh, if he wouldn't let me take it to slam fest. So he gave me a deposit and loaded the truck on the trailer. Uh, big John towed it to, uh, the slam fest for me so nothing would i didn't want to take a chance of anything happening to it so so towed at the slam fest and uh it was it was gone the day i got home yeah that's that's crazy i remember you telling me you sold it and what people may not realize like you're thinking you know we're talking like the late 90s you know i mean sure stuff was kind of popping off on the west coast but from the east coast perspective i mean that truck i remember of course big john's on the big wheels and things like that like you guys were really holding your own, so to speak, down there in South Florida? Yeah, I mean, at the time, I mean, John had, you know, this is, uh, you know, at that time I was in local minis. Um, John had his truck on 20s, and that was literally, as far as I know, that was the first truck on the planet, body dropped on 20s. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I went into Reds to buy the 17s, he had he had a set of 18s in stock, and at the time I was like, oh, man, are you crazy? I know that's way (laughs) too big, you know, so uh, stick, stay with the 17s. And, uh, you know, at the time that was, you know, the, the big size on an S10. So, you know, it was cool to have it like that. And, um, yeah. So, you know, that truck, uh, that truck was definitely, definitely cool. Courtney wanted to shoot it. And then, uh, he walked around the back and saw there was some damage on the roll pan. So he ended up not, not shooting it. So that truck never, uh, never saw the magazine other than just like show shots. Yeah, and th- then at that point, it like when it was it one of those trucks like when you sold it, it kind of disappeared from existence. Yeah, so there, man, that was the, the old man had really bad luck with it. So uh, I sold the truck to the old man, and I mean, it was it was funny because he showed up to the shop I worked at the next day, and I mean, this guy, he was probably late sixties, early seventies, like wow. he had no business. He had no business having a truck like that other than the fact that he had money and he just, you know, wanted it. So never been in anything with adjustable suspension. He literally hopped in the truck, drove it out of the shop, drove it out of the parking lot. And then one of my buddies drove by in a a bagged S10 and dragged on him. And the old man literally laid it out in the middle of Okeechobee Boulevard and railed the shit out of it. And uh, he ended up doing a ton of damage to the roll pan. Drove the truck immediately to a body shop, and when it went to that body shop, the truck got broken into. Someone stole the wheels. They stole everything off of it, stole the stereo out of it, and, uh, yeah, I I never saw the truck really right after that. You know, like, they they fixed the paint on it. It went to to Wicked. They they did an all-new hydraulic setup in it, and the old man put it in a storage unit, and I never saw it again. Yeah, never, could be never there, heard so. or saw anything about it. Yeah, as far as I know, it's you know I don't know. Someone someone said that they saw it in the Carolinas or something, or I don't know. I I, I never saw it again. So oh yeah, you know, unfortunately, it was it was one of those trucks that if I saw it today, I would buy it back. But you know, it's whatever. Yeah, <laughs> it's and long we, gone now. Yeah, and we salute you guys because, like, dude, I remember going ninety six, ninety seven, and seeing your truck, Big John's, that guy Sarkeesian. Like these different trucks, there was the um, the one local minis, the Aqua S10, that crazy white and blue and black one. Like seeing all that stuff down there was like motivation for us, you know. So that was the Peach truck, the one with the like the shark looking graphics on it. Oh, that was right. white with like some some pink. That was the Peach truck. That was its original paint job, and then Bobby Bobby painted it the Peach after that, and then I I bought it from Bob after that. Oh, that's but yeah, crazy. that truck had the graphics on it previously. Yeah, that is kind of crazy. Now, if we're talking like late 97, 
we remember going to Blood Drag a couple years later when Eddie got that going, and we see the Tacoma. Did you kind of go from the S10, take a quick break, and then jump over and buy the new Tacoma? There was no break. I, I I had already uh, I had already put money down and ordered that truck ah, before okay. I went to before I went to Slamfest. That's I just sick. didn't want anybody to know. So uh, I had that truck literally zero miles on it. I bought it. It had like well I say zero. It had like one mile on it when I bought it, and uh, I drove it directly from the dealership straight to Wicked. Dropped it off, or well tried to drop it off. I I think I got to Wicked. It had like forty five miles on it trying to drop it off the body, drop it and do everything. And, uh, unfortunately, um, I don't remember the guy's name, but there was a suburban that they had body dropped that, uh, um, I want to say Fester's suburban. That yeah. He has the, now. the yellow one. Yeah. Cause it was that awesome yeah, kind of darker that, color. Yeah. That guy beat me in the shop by a day. So they told me, they're like, man, if you, I had ordered the truck and it took like two, three weeks to get it. And, uh, they had told me like, look, if you can get here before, before him, you're getting in. If not, it's it's first come, first serve. So I got the truck there, and I was a day late. So I had to wait uh, till they finished that truck. So I literally drove it home, parked it. It didn't move. I didn't want to put any miles on it. I didn't want to do anything to it. Stock. I wanted it built before I even drove it. So, you know, yeah. that, was, uh, and that then, was how that one started. And then once it got laid out and you brought it to Tampa, you basically the photos, if I remember correctly, from the construction zone, they shot those because I remember seeing it there. So the cab was laid flat. You know, it's kind of the stock color. The bed was all shaved. You had the hydros, all that. That was was that like one of the first times you brought it out? So I had the truck. Um, I got it. So the truck was a '99. I bought it end of '98. Um, I bought it November of '98, and it was. I want to say it was done in nine in 98. Like it was body dropped in 98 and it was yeah. 99. So, uh, we could finished it. I want to say just before Christmas and I drove the truck like that. Actually, no, I'm, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Um, first place I took that truck was Daytona. Ah, okay. So that would have been, that would have been, that would have been March. Gotcha, so yeah, yeah, I guess my, my, my timeline's a little off. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, yeah, no, because I got the truck in November. I dropped it off to them uh, before the end of the year. So they had it in 98. And we got the truck, I got the truck back. And I think I had time to basically, I put a roll pan on it and took it to Daytona. Um, so there was, there was some pictures of it in Daytona. You know, it, it, it cruised around there and then... I drove it like that for a little while. Immediately, I wanted to get it into Mad Mods, and then basically it was just the, the wait to get in. So the only reason that truck got got shot for construction zone and seen the way it was, it was a big argument between Bobby from Mad Mods and I. I did not want to bring the truck out in primer. Wow. Um, you know, I I really like didn't want to do that, but he was just like. You know, I, I showed up at Slamfest and it was, it was there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I know because you, your standard is so high that you were kind of like, look, man, when I come out with shit, like I want this shit like locked in. No, no, it, it wasn't, it wasn't that. Okay. I, okay. <laughs> so like going, going back you know, years, my, my first real car was a Volkswagen Beetle and I couldn't afford to paint it. It was in primer for almost the whole time I owned it. And it was just one of those things that, like, you know, in my group of friends at that time, it was, you know, like, oh, man, when are you going to paint it? When are you going to paint right, it? Right. So, you know, when I did the truck, it wasn't – I dropped it off to Bobby, and it wasn't – I wasn't doing it in phases. I dropped it off to do the whole build, and they just weren't done with it in time for Slamfest. Got we it. were trying to have it done for Slamfest. It just didn't work out. So it went there in primer, and, it you know, it ended up being – you know, I had fun with it. It was cool. So I, I wasn't, I wasn't upset about it after the fact, but like leading up to it, I just, you know, it was a big argument between he and I, cause I did not want it to leave the shop unfinished. So, you know, back then it was, you know, we had the, that was at the, the early stages of the internet and you would get all the guys on there that would, uh, you know, talk all their, uh, Shit. all their stuff. And I didn't really want to be any part of that. So, <laughs> Oh Yeah. Well, you didn't. It didn't take long because boom, February rolls around. We drive down from Tampa. 
in my S10, we, of course, hit Blood Drag, which was that February uh, 2000. And, of course, dude, your truck was like like the talk of that weekend, seeing it there in that copper color. Yeah, the truck was, I mean, at that point, it was what I considered done. Um, you know, we uh, we did everything we could to get it done. I had just done a bunch of stuff to the motor, like literally the days leading up to it. Um, you know, I, I anything I could buy online, or not online, you know, over the phone at that time, anything that I could find to buy for it, I bought, you know, it, it wasn't a 22 RE like the previous Toyota. So there wasn't a whole lot of stuff available, but you know, I bought a header, found somebody that had like a, an exchange program for like a polished valve cover. I had a bunch of little stuff under the hood chromed and, you know, any little thing that I could do. And, uh, I had set it up ahead of time. Um, well, I didn't set it up, but, uh, we had discussed it previously and, uh, they were going to shoot the truck for street trucks. Uh, actually, no, at that point it was going to be for mini trucking and, um, it just, it, it ended up not working out. I guess, uh, Chris Schmidt came down, he was going to shoot the truck and I don't remember, I don't remember what happened, but it, it didn't get shot. So, um, you know, I had fun with it, whatever, everything was cool. I didn't really care at that point. My truck was finished. So that was uh, good enough for me. And, uh, um, yeah. And then, uh, you know, something we discussed previously uh you know the paint got damaged and uh that's you know if you want to get into that yeah story. yeah so exactly so <laughs> so and i'm going to share a bunch of photos of it when it was sitting in the grass at that blood drag and we always hashtag yeah. 99 n and then drgn for the tag that was on it so you guys can see all these different photos and whatnot but basically so between then and we will get to the street trucks feature because that comes out about a year and a half later but between yeah. then and like this, we've we've kind of heard some bits and pieces of like there was a movie production that wanted to link up with you and kind of use it. Like, how did all that go down? So the funny part is, originally they weren't they didn't even want my truck. They never they had never even seen my truck. <laughs> they they came to the stereo shop that I worked at, and they were looking for a uh, they were looking for a custom four door SUV to do a drive by shooting scene, <laughs> and. Uh, <laughs> And at the time, we had just finished doing the stereo in Dave Porter's blazer. Blazer. So, you know, Dave and I at the time were pretty good friends, and my truck was done, his truck was done, and uh, they had they had basically, uh, you know, blocked off downtown West Palm Beach, uh, the Clematis area, and they we drove down there with Dave's truck and my truck. I was just going to hang out with Dave while they used his truck and they were, you know, they were supposed to pay him to do it. Well, when we got there, they saw my truck sitting behind his and they were like, Oh man, what if we, what if we laid in the bed of the, that truck and did it? And you know, I, me, I was starstruck, you know, I hear, Oh, my truck's going to be in a movie. That'd be so cool. Right. So I, I, of course I jumped at the chance. And, uh, so they did a drive by shooting scene where, uh, a guy was leaning out the passenger window. Uh, another guy was laying in the bed and they were shooting uh, automatic. I think one dude had like an Uzi and another dude had an assault rifle. I don't remember exactly, but um, obviously blanks, but I never thought about it. The shells coming out of the gun chipped up the truck all the way to the metal down the whole passenger side of the truck. Uh, they were chipped. There were chips on the roof. There were chips on the hood. There were chips in the bed. I mean, there was even chips. Uh, there were chips everywhere. So uh, the guys from the movie production, you know, at the time they played it cool. Like, oh, yeah, we'll take care of any damage. No problem, man. If you, you know, if you uh, just get us an estimate and we'll, we'll take care of it. Okay. Well, I guess they weren't ready for how much it was going to cost to repaint that truck because it was a, a tri-coat color and, uh, there was no blending it. So basically three quarters of the truck had to get resprayed and they, uh, they shit themselves when they saw the number. So <laughs> it's like more uh, than a movie production. I'm sure. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was like, you know, at the time it was a crazy number. Now it's, you know, you wouldn't even, Oh, it's a fender bender. No big deal. Right. But you know, it was, uh, I want to say at the time it was like 6,500 bucks to repair it because basically it was a, a full reshoot. Yep. Yep. And, uh, 
you know, they basically told me, no way, they're not paying that. That's ridiculous. So I ended up just cutting my losses. I think they cut me a check for like 1500 bucks. And I brought the truck to Mad Mods. I was just going to eat it and pay to fix the truck. And at the time, uh, that's when Bones had just popped up in the truck scene. Oh, yeah. So, you know, he was doing a lot of people's hoods and, you know, his own personal truck was badass with the graphics. So, you know, I, he had the bay next door to Mad Mods and, um, Bobby was like, man, you should talk to him about just doing graphics on it. He's like, at this point, you know, you got to do, you got to repaint most of the truck. You could bury it in graphics and at least change it. You know, if you're going to spend the money, at least make it different. Okay. So, you know, it was definitely more graphics than I wanted to do just to hide all the damage. But, you know, in the end I was, I was happy with it. So, you know, it didn't really matter, but, um, but yeah, so bones, uh, I ended up, you know, paying his price to, to graphic the truck, which, you know, at that point it was, it was cheaper to have him graphic the truck than it was to repaint the truck. So, he, oh, yeah. you know, he was, you know, he, he, he was, uh, he was really cheap for the quality work he was doing. So, you know, he, uh, he did me a solid and, and painted the truck and, uh, he had it maybe, I don't know, like he had it like three months and, uh, got the truck back. And that was, uh, you know, that was it with the graphics, you know, that was, oh, yeah. that was why it got the graphics and the only reason it got the graphics. Yeah. It makes so. sense now. Now people are going to ask, right. If they're, they're listening to it and they don't know the story, whatever that happened with the movie, did you ever see any footage? Because I, I've kind of heard different things about, did it ever come out? So I ended up, there was a movie trailer and the trailer actually had the scene where they used my truck. Wow. Uh, but the, wow. but the movie never came out. So there, you know, I, I remember, uh, I, I had the pictures somewhere. I don't know. I'd have to find it. I know, I know you had them at some point. Um, someone I think sent something to me, but I don't, I don't remember seeing it. I don't know. That might just be my memory. Yeah. So the the name of the movie was the librarian. Uh, and it was a, a, it was a William Forsyth movie. Um, and it just, it just never happened. Yeah. Got it. So. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I was just curious more than anything. Now, I've always wondered this because it's ironic because Sean Carlson's brother now lives down. Uh, shout out to Trevor. He lives down your area, which I want to try to link yeah. up with him one time. What, did you did you ever kind of feel inspired by some of what you were seeing from the West? Because that that's some of the, what I always assumed in terms of the graphics. So the, the, the forked out tribal design, I dug the shit out of the Sean's forerunner. Uh, the forerunner was badass. That was definitely somewhat of an inspiration for it. What I initially wanted and what I got were two different things, uh-huh. but in the end I was happy. So it really didn't matter. You know, like, uh, I wanted to do basically I went to bones and I brought him pictures, a bunch of trucks, like, you know, a lot of the, um, the different paint styles that I liked and uh, the forerunner was obviously one of the, one of the graphic jobs that I liked. And it was, you know, just a lot of, you know, last look, just that, that style of a paint job is what I wanted. And at that time there really wasn't anybody on this coast that was doing it. So, you know, he, he jumped in and, and did what he wanted and I, not what he wanted. He did what was his, his take on what I wanted, you know, he kind of meshed a bunch of stuff together and that's what we came up with. Um, but by all means he killed it. You know, for me, it was at the time, you know, I thought it was the coolest thing ever, you know, and it just, uh, super happy. He did a killer oh, yeah. job on it. Yeah. It came and, out uh, so good, dude. And, and what, what I was going to say is, is, um, I remember, so we saw it at that blood drag in February and then I went to Nopi in 99 and 2000 with the homies and we saw it up there in uh, in September, and boom, it had the graphics on it. Yep, yep. That was one of the first shows that it went to like that. Yeah, I think that, yeah. Again, Big John towed it up there to Nopi that year, too. Like, John and I were, uh, were road dogs at the time. We went to all the shows together. So he just fortunately always had the full-size truck, and I had the mini truck, so it worked out <laughs> good for me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now, one of my favorite mods on the truck, and maybe only some of the Tacoma guys would pick up on this, but I always thought it was pretty dope that 
underneath the headlight, you've got that little bit of, I think it's normally a plastic piece, right? Part of the grill. Yours was one of the only ones I can remember where you shaved that piece and it was like fully molded into the fender, I think. Yeah. So on my truck was a 99, um, on that truck, it, it was metal and behind the grill, there was a bolt. So basically when they shaved the corner light, they welded that piece to the, the fender and that, uh, that bolt that would normally hold that piece in ended up being part of the fender mount. So they did that. Um, they did the, the one-off cow hood on it. Um, that was sick. That was another one of my favorite mods that I think was like so subtle that not everyone noticed it. I'll share some photos of it. Yeah. It, it was just like a really, really, uh, it, it may be a two inch, you yep. know, it wasn't even, it, it really wasn't even there for any reason. Um, you know, the, the top of the motor, we definitely, well, we, wicked when they did the body drop on the truck they uh they notched one of the the supports underneath the hood but other than that you know that nothing needed to come through the hood but um you know the cow hood was just kind of i wanted that that look on the truck and uh you know seth and bob at the time i want to say seth did the did the hood but i mean absolutely killed it that was probably one of my favorite parts of the whole truck was the hood and then uh you know, obviously the, the sheet metal in the bed, I, you know, from the, the, the sheet metal bed was always a big thing for me after doing my Mazda. It was kind of like everything had to have a sheet metal bed. The, if the S10 wasn't already painted when I got it, and if I would have had it longer, it definitely would have got done. Yep. Got it. Yeah. And I forgot cause you did take it. Some, uh, Phil Fowler has sent us photos. Other people I have as well, like Tim from NC Florida, but Texas heat wave 2000, that's when you and big John and some of the guys from down there, took the long trek to go all the way out to, to uh, Texas. Yeah. So actually that truck went out there, that truck went to heat wave. Uh, <laughs> well, funny story. So that's, I'm forgetting part of it. Now you're bringing it back. Um, that truck went to heat wave. Uh, oh, when it was white, when it was all white, still basically a stock truck on high. I think I had, I th yeah, it had the hydro. Well, no, no. I mean, I say stock, but it, you know, it wasn't. Uh, right, it wasn't. Right. There was no paint and body. It was still white. Um, but at that point, it just had the roll pan, the body drop, and I think I had done a stereo in it or something. Nothing, nothing crazy, but it was still white. And uh, the interior was I think like halfway done. It wasn't even finished when we brought it out there, but it was still a brand new truck. And um, I had uh, brought it out there, and uh, Brant had uh, bought the black Tacoma to uh, Tulo taco. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we parked next to each other and it was, it was cool, you know, seeing the truck like that. And then um, same, same scenario, you know, we weren't even home yet. And at the time it was like the AOL instant messenger in the right. chat rooms, John and I, John and I stopped and somebody said something. And uh, I literally dropped the truck off at mad mods, like, the next day <laughs> yeah you're like here we somebody, go somebody somebody said something about the truck and it wasn't it wasn't as cool as the black one and uh it was a few comments that were made that i just you know back then if uh if somebody had something to say i'd you know i'd go all in and you, you couldn't tell me anything so <laughs> oh yeah yeah no, I remember, and then we went to, there was a Daytona show. I was looking back at old photos. It was called Truckspo. They only did it a couple of years up at the Speedway, and I remember seeing the truck there. Now, I was always yeah. curious when when it was shot because it basically runs in uh, July, I think, 01 street trucks. Um, do you remember, yeah. was it shot down at Blood Drag that year? So the truck got shot like three times, ah. and it never it never actually happened. So... Uh, it got shot for mini truck in, I want to say twice. I can't remember who shot it first. I think Mike self shot it first and it was promised a cover, but never happened. And, uh, Lance had just taken over as editor, if I remember correctly. And he had an issue with the way that, I don't, I don't remember the, the yeah, politics the exact behind it, but right. it was, it was like Mike self shot it, but Mike self left. So they didn't want to shoot it for, I don't know. Yeah. You know, yeah. For it was whatever that reason, it didn't get yeah. shot. So yeah. then, uh, I had another guy from down here reshot it for what 
was supposed to be the cover and uh they shot it and lance didn't like we shot it by the beach and there was a palm tree in the background and he didn't like the palm tree and you know this is before all the photoshop sure, stuff i sure. guess so he was like oh it looks like the palm tree's growing out of the truck and uh, you know it was just every excuse he could think of to not run the truck so at the time you know, street trucks was running and Courtney was like, dude, I want to run the truck. So, um, we ended up reshooting it again. And, uh, we found like a, a construction site where it was just, you know, a huge sand lot with these big, huge sand hills in the back. I mean, it didn't look South Florida at all. It looked like we were in the desert or something, but, right, right. um, you know, that, that was the actual, uh, you know, what was, what was shot again and Courtney ran it in street trucks. Yeah. It came out so good because dude, like with the interior, that bone color, I guess you could call it in contrast with the copper and stuff and the graphics and then the wheels. I mean, those wheels are classic by today's standards. Like it just had everything. Like you said, the hood the inside the bed with the graphics, how it flowed through. And, um, I just always thought the front end, like you said, kind of, I was kind of forgetting earlier about the shaved corners that obviously tied into those little pieces, but dude, it, it just looks so damn awesome, man. Yeah. So fast forward when, when the new front end came out for the Tacoma, I ended up changing the front end and I had to cut that part off. So it didn't work with the new front end. So unfortunately that part was gone. <laughs> yeah. So, and I wanted, I wanted to mention that because here's the thing. So shout out to to, to Jason uh, Redden down south, of course, you know, he's, I always joke around with him, calling him the mini truck and encyclopedia, but I was showing yep. him and he didn't realize, so I'm going to, I'm going to uh, throw him under the bus here, but he didn't realize when I was talking to Dandler one day, uh, one of your NC brothers, um, you know, yep. I had known that there were some parts that, that I remember you seeing your truck in a different form, right? With, with some of that, but you basically yeah. ended up swapping some parts with them that I think he's got a we wall hanger. Yeah, so well, I don't know. He might. I think he has the hood. I don't know what he has. Uh, there's a bunch of parts that that went all over the place. So yeah, I don't yeah. know who has what. But um, I ended up the truck got. I don't even know what year that new front end would have been. I don't remember at this point. Right, right. But um, when they changed, I think it was like '01 or something. They changed the front clip to like the the more rounded, newer, newer style, crystal clear headlights and all that. Um, I had seen a picture of it. The trucks weren't even on the lot. Um, I ended up going to Toyota and I had a friend that worked in the parts department at the time. And, uh, and he loved the truck. And this dude did some crazy research for me, got part numbers and ended up getting all the parts from Japan. So wow. the trucks hadn't even, the new, the new front end hadn't even hit the lot yet. And I already had it. Damn. So, I got the headlights, the grill, the hood, and uh, the core support had to change. And then I ended up getting, I got the bumper from Jason. I bought the, the bumper off his green truck. Um, I want to say we worked a trade for that. And then I sold him the hood. So I, sh I drove over to Tampa um, with the hood and the bumper and basically got his bumper and some money, came back. And I had, when the core support showed up, finally, I took that straight to the chrome where I had the whole core support chromed and then basically every bracket that bolted to it, because at that point it was off the truck and there wasn't really going to be any downtime. So I had all that stuff chromed. As soon as it came back, we put it on the truck and literally got it bolted on the truck the night prior to blood drag. So it got put on the truck and I drove it to blood drag. I don't remember what year that would have been. I guess it would have been Oh yeah, um, one. That was the was. year. That was the year that, uh, Steve, Jason and myself had the three Tacomas parked together. Oh, right, right, and, right. Uh, yeah. And so I'm, I'm yeah, guessing the I, hood that he ended up with probably did get painted. Yeah. He painted it, but that was the cow hood off of my truck that he had on his green truck. Right. Right. And right. then, uh, the bumper off of my truck with the, I had like the billet covers from billet and acrylic fantasies. He, uh, he had, I gave him all that stuff with it. So he just repainted the bumper, put it on his truck and then painted the hood. And, um, and then we put the new front end on mine, but I, you know, the, the filler panel on the grill was a different shape. So we ended up having to cut the, 
cut the piece off. So like, if you look close in the pictures at that show, it's, there's no paint on that edge of the, of the fender. It's just, uh, it's raw metal, but you know, the cut was clean enough where nobody really noticed and I didn't have any touch up paint. So literally the morning of the show, we, we ended up pulling the truck out of the shop and drove it to the show. Oh yeah. So, yeah. That's pretty cool history. And like I said, the truck was awesome. And I mean, you and I both know, I mean, it was basically a cover truck. It's just whatever those politics were, but I'm just glad yeah. that it did run, you know, when they, when Courtney did the write up and the other guy shot it, you know, it came out awesome. And I'm just glad that it was kind of etched in the magazine history. No. Yeah. And then they did like a best of, and it came back out in, in their, whatever, you know, yes, like that's top, right. top whatever trucks it came out in that too. So that was cool. You know, I, I was, I was happy with that, you know, no, no reason to be upset. I mean, it didn't get covered, but oh well, whatever. You know, it's not the end of the world. Yeah, exactly. Now, after the, so, like, basically, what, like, at that point, do you just kind of go, you know, this truck's done a lot, and do you so- decide, hey, I want to get back to my roots, and you want to do a Mazda, or what ends up happening there? So that pretty much is how life got in the way. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, got that, it. Got it. At that at that point, the shop that I had worked at for nine years we had a separate shop that was like a wood shop from the retail location. So at that point I was getting heavy into doing the fabrication stuff for the car audio. And that was pretty much my home. So I was redoing the truck. I decided I wanted to change it up again. Wow. And uh, I had bought all the forerunner sheet metal for the front, but we were going to, we were changing some stuff up. It was, I, I was doing the four on fenders. Anki had sponsored me. They gave me a new set of wheels. I put the truck on twenties at the time at 18s. So it went on twenties front and rear. And, uh, basically the shop that I worked at, the owner out of nowhere came in on a Friday morning and said, uh, Hey guys, shop's closed. Um, you know, I've decided I don't want to do this anymore. And we had no, you know, Notice. Nothing going up to it to pretty much, you know, do anything. And at the time, my Tacoma was in the warehouse for the shop in pieces. And uh, I don't know if you remember Jimmy Brown that had the uh, the celery stock colored uh, Ranger, the Splash. Oh, right, right. That was, yeah. that was in negative camber. So my truck and his truck were both in the shop. I was doing the stereo and all the, the interior stuff in his truck at the time. And the owner pretty much told me like, hey, dude, look, you know, uh, the lease is up over there. I don't want to renew it. Um, you know, so you got two weeks at this point to get all your stuff out of there or you can take over the lease. So any money that I had put aside to build the truck, it was kind of a sink or swim moment. And that was when I started my business. Damn. So, uh, you know, I pretty much, the truck got put on the back burner and I opened the shop and the shop did well. So, you know, I started making money. It took me probably six to eight months before I was recouped the money I put out and, and, uh, you know, back to the point where I could build the truck. Well, then, when I reached out to Bobby at Mad Mods about redoing the truck, you know, cause I was like, look, you know, I'm, I'm ready to redo it. He was like, bro, I have cars that have been waiting since before we did the truck originally. Wow. And Bobby and I, back in those days, we always kind of pony traded and, you know, did our, did our thing back and forth. Like if he had a car in the shop that needed a stereo or something, he would call me, I'd do a stereo in it and then he'd be like, Oh, you know, I know you want to redo some stuff on the car. You want to just work it out. Or I was always doing installs with molded painted stereo stuff and he would do all the paint and body on them. Mm -hmm. So we'd always trade out. So at that point I had a pretty substantial credit with him and he was like, man, if you buy a new truck, I'll do it. He goes, but right now, if I took your Tacoma in, he goes, these dudes are going to lose it. He goes, somebody's going to kill me. So that was where the Mazda came from. Oh. So, <laughs> so at that point I went out and found a, I think that truck was a 90, uh, a 90 extra cab B2200. And, uh, uh, you know, big shout out to Donnie, you know, he, he was a, a huge, huge contributor help in that because I literally had 
no experience doing any kind of metal fabrication at that point. And, uh, you know, Donnie was like, dude, if you want to do it, he's like, we'll body drop it. We'll do all the suspension. At that point, Donnie was a welder by trade. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he and I, uh, we had a friend, uh, Tom, not Tom Bennett, an an older guy, Tom, that had a a house with a, a detached shop next to it that was pretty big. And he was like, listen, you guys are more than welcome to come in here and do whatever you want. He's like, I don't really use the shop. So as long as you're here working on it, whatever time it takes, you're welcome to do it. So it became a, a night and weekend project. And, and, you know, listen, I had a business at the time that was fairly new and I yeah, can honestly stressful. say, yeah. you know, Donnie, Donnie was a, 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 a rock star. You know, he would go in there after work and, you know, he was super into it, you know, not saying I wasn't there a lot, but you know, Donnie was definitely on it more than me. So, you know, we got the truck, uh, you know, body dropped it, did all the suspension on it. You know, I'm, I've never really been a, an air ride guy. I've always been a hydraulic guy. So we did hydraulics in it and um, got all that stuff done. And then the truck went to uh, the truck went straight to Mad Mods. And again, you know, sheet metal inside of the bed. And I had big plans for stuff to do to it. The, uh, the roof had a big dent in it. And rather than fix the dent, we put a huge sliding rag in it. And, uh, you know, pretty much when the truck went there, unfortunate incident i dropped the truck off bobby from mad mods had his motorcycle accident it was either the same day or the next day oh wow so you know so that put him in a wheelchair for months and um you know at that point it was like i didn't need the truck it wasn't it was i was building it to have a cool daily driver again just because i didn't have the tacoma so that pretty much it sat at his shop for a while and it, you know, it, it was like at the end of the day, he was my friend sure. and uh, you know, he, he had been in his accident and got hurt. So we weren't really, uh, we weren't really worried about how long it took. Exactly. So, yeah. Health first. You know, all it, that. it sat there and, you know, and then uh, I literally dropped it off and I had two things that were my absolute do not do. And, uh, I showed up at the shop and I basically said, look, you can do whatever you want to the truck. The only thing I don't want to do, I don't want to shave the taillights and I don't want to shave the door handles. So I showed up at the shop, the taillights were gone and the door handles were gone. <laughs> so and and like, he what was the just, his, his comment was, Hey man, you're in Bobby's world, bro. This is how this is going down. So you know, needless to say, at that point, all right, LED taillights, LED third brake light, and it just, uh, you know, it, it jumped into a whole nother, another uh, realm oh. on that one. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that truck came out good, and we'll share some photos. I mean, I shared some in the past, but we'll kind of re-up them uh, so people can see it. But we got a chance to see it at uh, Showfest that year. I mean, with the sliding rag, the hydros, yep. the yellow and white paint, kind of with the graphic I mean, it really it, it had that Eric Cryan kind of mix, right? Like the stuff that, for the most part, that that you liked, but uh, of course, you know that that was executed very well. Yeah, I mean, we you know we did pretty much anything and everything we could possibly think of was done to the truck at that point. The uh, at Showfest, it wasn't done. Um, it was a little it was a little out of the realm for what. Uh, what Donnie and I were capable of not going to say what we weren't capable of it. Uh, it was a little beyond, beyond our, uh, creativity at the time. So at going to heat wave back in the day, I could remember seeing all the, all the dualies out there that had like all the tubular stuff in the bed that unbolted and everything was Chrome. So the Mazda, I had, uh, Mike from wicked, after Wicked was already closed, he did redid the rear suspension on the truck and basically made it so the whole center chunk of the suspension, like the the crossbars and uh, the upper mount for the cylinders, all that was all tubular and everything unbolted so it could be chromes, but that never got done. So suspension got done, but I never I never had the opportunity to take the chance to to finish it at that point. You know, the truck, the truck never got finished. Uh, it was just basically like the exterior of the truck was done 
and it came down to the interior and the stereo and I just never had the opportunity to, to get to it. And, yep, you know, yep. life got, in the, life got in the way and it got back burnered and just never, never got finished. Oh yeah. So, unfortunately. Well, we'll share some of the photos. I think people will appreciate seeing it again. Cause it was pretty awesome. Now, if we fast forward to it's ironic, cause I was going to ask you about like kind of your love for the hydros. Now on the next build I wanted to talk about was, I believe, and maybe it wasn't the exact next one, but the expedition comes into play. Was that one of your first <laughs> rides? Wasn't that on air? So that was the first truck I ever had on air. That truck. <laughs> so back to, I couldn't, I had to have something cool as a daily driver, <laughs> right. you know, uh, you know, the Tacoma was sitting there collecting dust, couldn't get done because, you know, uh, too many people would have a problem with that truck getting redone. So, building the Mazda, Bobby got into his accident. That was supposed to be my daily driver. So I went and bought the expedition. So then while I had the expedition, I was like, Oh, I'm just going to put some wheels on it. And that, you know, then it the got gate, wheels the and then it was like, Oh <laughs> yeah. And it was like, Oh, what size tire do I put on it? And I was like, man, at the time, the guys at wicked had just done a buddy of mine's expedition and they did uh, hydraulics in the front with airbags in the back. And I was like, man, that'd be super cool. And I could tow the Mazda when it, or the Tacoma when they're done. So I drove that truck still with its paper plate on it over to wicked and had them do, uh, originally I dropped it off to do hydraulics in the front and air in the back. It's about doing the hydraulics in the front, the air in the back. And then Rick at wicked was like, dude, it's just do airbags. He's like, it, it's the stuff has come so far now. We can get the lift. You know, we, we can make all it. that. Well, it wasn't even the lift. It's like I my my teal Mazda I had done air ride on before we put the hydraulics in it, and it was just you know back then it wasn't multiple compressors. Right. It was just it was it was so slow. Like Quarter you'd have inch to make lines an appointment and all that. Yeah, you'd have to make an appointment to get it off the ground, and it was just <laughs> like it was a uh, 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 manual valves that dumped the air inside the truck, and it's thunk like a like somebody just did a burnout in the truck <laughs> and it just it was so not cool that i just i didn't want it and then he was like listen man he's like we can do electric valves we can do all this and you know i i just went with it and uh that was in like i want to say that was o2 maybe it was a 2000 expedition that i did in o2 so yeah we did that and then um it was on 22s and it laid the running board. It didn't lay frame, but it, you know, it still had the running boards and they, they laid out. So it was good enough. You know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to cut into the body. I wanted to keep the third row seat and uh, you know, all that stuff back there. I, I didn't really want to mess with. So um, they made it fairly low. It was, it was cool enough. And uh, I had that as a daily driver for ever. And then, um, you know, then it was like, all right, well, one of the manufacturers approached me, the owners, the owner of Mass Pro Audio approached me and he was like, man, I need a truck for Daytona. He's like, uh, do you have anything? And at the time I just got the truck back from doing the air ride. And I was like, well, I, I just got, I just did this truck. And he was like, man, make a list. I'll give you whatever you want. So, you know, we uh, made a list and I had like, I don't know, I think a week to get everything done. So it wasn't crazy. For, for Daytona, but it was actually it wasn't Daytona. It was a, a, a different show. Mm -hmm. We did the back of the truck for that show, got it all done. I had put a TV in the dash and did like the console for the radio and then did the back of the truck, but the doors weren't done at the time or anything like that. So got it done, brought it to the show. They were super happy, you know, and then they were like, look, uh, if you can do all the doors and, and finish it, we'd like to take it to CES. So at that point it was a mad dash to get the doors done and uh, finish it up. And then they towed it out to Vegas for the consumer electronics show. And Which one in January. That, yep. Yeah, that was in January. And then you saw it, uh, it was, you know, freshly done and we used it in date. They used it in Daytona for their booth there. So. Yeah, and even by today's standards, I mean the thing was super clean, and like like you said, the running boards laid out. Um, I always liked because I took a couple photos of it that year. The the interior, how you did, you know, that was even before people. I mean, people were doing screens, but that screen that you had mounted in there, and you had molded, you know, that whole bezel piece. Like, dude, it looked yeah. so nice. 
yeah, I took apart a flip down TV and, and molded the bezel into the dash and had it where all the buttons stuck through. So it was, it was, uh, at the time it was cool. You know, I, I guess it to, you know, it still kind of stays with what the trend of people are doing now. Mm-hmm. So, you know, now you can get a radio that size. So it's, you know, you don't have to go crazy, but you know, had I, I don't remember if it was a nine or a 10 inch screen that we put in there, but you know, it, it fit, didn't have to modify the AC. Everything was cool. So as long as I have to modify the AC, it was whatever the biggest thing I could put in there. Yeah, so, that thing was know, dope, and it was never shot for like like even Dub Magazine or anything, huh? That truck got shot for Tailgate. Oh, did it? Wow. So that that truck ran that truck ran in Tailgate. God, I, don't I don't remember, remember that. Yeah, I'll have when, to go back and look. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, what was the guy? John. John Gilbert. Yeah. Yep. John Gilbert shot it for Tailgate. They actually shot it. I want to say they were in town for. Maybe it was blood drag. Yeah, I think um, it was. Eddie, yeah, yeah. Eddie Sabreco brought him by my shop, and they shot it, and they shot a couple of my customers' trucks when they were there. So, yeah, pretty cool. Now, kind of fast forward from there. I, I personally, you know, not knowing you as well as like the homie Tom Ben and some of the guys down south, like Donnie, I always assumed I was like, man, you know, Eric's got this Tacoma, he's got this Mazda. And I was kind of surprised a few years ago that I think it was like time, you knew it was time, and my understanding was you did let those go. Yeah, so basically where I live now, I have about three quarters of a mile of dirt road to get to my house. You know, I had a few other trucks after the expedition. I had some Silverados that were lowered on 26s and stuff like that. And, you know, nice, clean daily driver trucks, nothing crazy. And, uh, when I bought this house where I live now, I live in, in the area they, they, they call the acreage in West Palm beach. So it's like an equestrian area, um, you know, where people all have acre and a quarter, two and a half acre lots, but it's all dirt road to get to my house. Yeah. So, um, you know, those trucks were just not practical to have out here. So when I moved out here, the intention was, oh, I'm going to build a shop. Once I build the shop, I can finish the trucks. Well, again, life got in the way. My wife and I ended up, uh, you know, my wife got pregnant with my now five-year-old daughter. Yep, yep. And uh, when I had both those trucks in my two-car garage, and one day my wife got stuck outside with my, you know, couple-month-old daughter in the rain, ah, right. and it just made me, it just, it just made me feel horrible. So I just, you know, like I, I reached out to a couple people, uh, bones had been asking about the Mazda and I just called him and said, dude, if you want it, just come get it. Um, you know, the money thing, I don't care. We can work it out later. It's not a big deal. You know, just, you know, he wanted it for a daily driver, which whatever, you know, he ended up doing a trade with somebody. So another guy has it now, but that's whatever. And then, uh, Mike that used to work at wicked, Oh, yeah, um, uh, Donnie and everybody says one arm Mike, right? Yep, yep. So I called Mike, and I was like, hey, man, you know, I know you had said at one point you might want the Tacoma. And, you know, he was like, listen, I would love it, but, you know, I just don't want to, you know, he's like, I don't really want to spend the money on a truck. I was like, dude, if you want it, you can have it. So I gave him the Tacoma, and since then he's got it pretty much back you know from from my understanding it's it's a running driving truck again he put uh he put normal fenders back on it i know he's got to do some paint work on it but he put some billets on it and uh you know it's back to it's back to together you know i think at some point he might get with bones and i mean they work together at miranda built so you know now uh you know he's gonna possibly finish the truck back to how it was so you know he's got it now and you know hopefully uh Hopefully he gets it back together. That would be cool to see it in, oh, yeah. its, uh, in all its glory. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. And, I mean, it's a testament to the work that was put into it. And it's really cool that, you know, you're close enough to these guys to kind of go, hey, look, I know you can be the caretaker to a certain extent. Um, and, you know, you were trying to look out for your family. So nobody's going to argue with that. Uh, no yeah, same person I mean, is. Now I built a big shop behind my house. So – you know, eventually I'm set up now where I can build myself something again. So one of these days, something will pop up. So we'll see what happens. But you know, it, 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 there, there were a couple things that I got in the works and just decided not to go with it. So I don't know when I find the right project, I'm going to, I'm going to dive back into it. But as of right now, I'm just, 
enjoying my family and uh, every penny I have because I know what's going to happen when I do get another project. I'm going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to be in trouble with the wife. So, oh yeah, <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. Right, more time, more time. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Something that many people may not realize is if you think about. I mean, we could do a laundry list of Catch-22, you said Dave Porter's Blazer, you know, all these local yep. mini rides, Shulman's projects, yep. you know, Navigator, the Lightning. I mean, so much like, you know, some people might go, hey, I know Eric because he had this Tacoma that was featured, right? But when you really look at your contributions for the past, dude, I hate to say we're getting old, like 30 years, almost 25, 30 at least yeah. for you. Like, boom, I yeah, mean, dude, it's yeah. quite a resume, man. Yeah, I mean it was it was pretty cool back in the day when the when the mini truck stuff was popping off here. I mean it was it was literally like, you know, almost every month there was a magazine that came out that, you know, we played a part in in uh, or I played a part in in doing something to the truck. You know whether it was a uh, you know doing some wrapping a bunch of panels in tweed or doing a stereo or whatever. You know it was uh, it was cool. Oh yeah. So, you know, there's, there's been quite a few, you know, and then like the one that, the one that most people know me for as far as the audio stuff from back in the day would be Dave's, uh, Dave's F-150 doing, doing catch 22. You know, because that thing was, you know, it, it, it got seen everywhere and you know, it, it got so much press. It was just ridiculous. Oh yeah. Yeah. As we wind it down, just the last couple questions, um, was there anyone that ever like inspired you? Like when you were younger, like, was it anybody down South or, you know, were you looking at the magazines? Like we all were going, man, I want to build something that was going to be featured in a magazine. You know, I mean, like I, yeah, for sure. You know, there were, there were plenty of guys like, you know, growing up in this area, um, you know, as a kid, the cool trucks were all in, uh, you know, local minis was like the, the, the club that had all like the, the crazy stuff in that era mm. and uh you know seeing all those guys at, at lake worth beach you know pete had a uh, blue aura yes, I would see blue that aura. that's what i was around. trying to think of earlier yep. yeah i would see blue aura and then there was uh there was an azuzu that was orange with hydraulics and a dancing bed i want to say it was like orange juice or orange appeal or something like that there were a there were a bunch of trucks and then just you know when i when i got my first mazda you know, started going to the shows and, uh, you know, that literally I, you know, would see those guys and it was like, man, they were, you know, I, I wanted to be a part of that club and, and, uh, eventually got into the club and, you know, I was in that club forever. And then, uh, you know, when I, you know, just being around those guys and, you know, at the time in South Florida, they were the guys that were really doing all the, the cool shit, you know, like all the trucks, you know, I hate to say it, but it was like that West Coast style. They sure. were that was the style of trucks that these guys were building. You know, it was. I mean, granted, it had the the South Florida flavor with the bright colors and you know the the pastels and stuff. But you know, it was definitely uh, you know big inspiration of like the West Coast trucks and and uh, you know that was that was killer. And like as far as the Mazdas. Dude, Tom, Tom McMurdo's uh, the yellow yes. standard cab was on the cover, and I mean that was like you know, at the time that was like my dream was to have a truck like that. And, uh, you know, I mean, you know, fast forward, I, I, I think I had a couple of trucks like oh, that. Yeah. You know, I thought, it, yeah. thought it was cool, you know? So I, that, that definitely was a huge inspiration. Honestly, that's, that's why I went with the yellow on the, the, you know, the, the two tone on the Mazda, obviously, you know, it was not fully yellow, but that always made me want to have a yellow truck. And, you know, for me, I'm, too big of a guy to have a standard cab. I mean, I'm six, three, so right. standard cab truck for me just wasn't going to happen. So, yeah, you know, yeah. always had to have an extra cab, but, but, uh, but yeah, that truck was a, a huge inspiration and, uh, you know, and then, you know, fast forward when I got into NC, just all those guys, you know, everybody was just at the time pushing the limits. I mean, they still are. So, you know, that was, uh, that was big for me. You know, it was just like seeing all the guys that I idolized as a kid, seeing the magazine trucks and then getting to know them all. And, and, uh, you know, just, it, it was super cool. You know, like the, you know, my, my youth, I guess you could say was, uh, you know, a lot of fun, man. And, it, and, uh, you know, even, um, I know I mentioned his name a few times, but like big John, yep. you know, he and I are still close. And, uh, we, uh, you know, we went to a ton of shows, you know, he and I literally, it seemed like every month we were, you know, in the truck driving somewhere, 
across the country to go somewhere, you know, whether it was Texas Heat Wave or Nopi or Show Fest or whatever, you know, we'd always hop in the truck and, and gone, you know, everybody else would have an excuse, but, you know, he was always my, uh, ride or die, my guy, <laughs> you know, me, me and him were always going everywhere. So that was always cool. Yeah, um, and, and I really wanted to give you props, and if you think about, like, for a while, I think some people, especially the West, not necessarily the West Coast, but the, people looked at Florida as, like, the Miami base, you know, neons, right. ground effects, but really when you when you put the flag in the ground and you go, you know, what you guys were doing, including yourself down south, Big John included, you know, with Bob and Seth and Wicked, and then you had Matt Torgerson up in the greater Orlando area, yep. you know, you had, like, Rob Scepter, rest in peace, like, all these guys, even Bruce Rivera, rest in peace, like, they were really representing Florida saying, hey, we're not just neons and ground effects. We're building some shit. And I think, like, if you really lay down and, and people knew the history of all of these builds, like some of, like, even your Mazda that maybe never graced a feature. But you, if you add the culmination of all of that and with Dave's uh, Red Hot truck, you know, back in the late 80s going to the 90s, like, Florida was really holding our own, man. Yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely, a, a you know, a good time to, to be around. You know, it was definitely fun. You know, we did a we did a lot of stuff back then that, you know, now I, you know, I would definitely not do the things that I did <laughs> right, when I was younger, right. but, you know, I, I definitely, uh, you know, I was known to be the, the, you know, I guess let's, I'll say it. I was the asshole that had no problem doing 80 down the highway and just laying the <laughs> truck out. And, uh, you know, that, that's even, you know, that's how Courtney got to know me <laughs> you know, from, from videos that popped up on the, on the internet. So, uh, you know, but yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely fun, man, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, I definitely don't regret any bit of it. Every bit of it, you know, was, was awesome. Oh yeah. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch upon before I let you go, Eric, is, um, I know you don't really need to be plugged, but certainly I want people to know, um, advanced audio solutions. Yes, advanced audio concepts. Oh, thank no, you. no, advanced audio concepts. Yep. Advanced audio concepts on Instagram. You want to follow Eric and t talk to us a little bit about what you do and where you're at. Uh, I'm in Pompano Beach, Florida, which, you know, it's, um, I can see the sign that says welcome to Fort Lauderdale from my shop. Um, you know, it's, uh, South Florida, you know, we do a little bit of everything. Um, you know, anything from exotic cars, motorcycles, you know, we get a ton of the old Chevys, you know, whether the, the guys with the donks with the big wheels, that's, you know, honestly, th these days, that's probably half of my business. But, um, you know, we do a ton of work, you know, and uh, a lot of fabrication, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, but I, I think it's cool stuff we do. So, you know, my customers seem to think so, too. So, hey, as long as, uh, as long as there's people willing to pay for it, you know, I'm going to keep doing it. So. Yeah, and if you check out his page, you'll see he does stereo, interior stuff, all kinds of Dakota digital gauge st stuff, uh, wiring. I mean, really high end. Um, the one last thing, Tim from NC Florida had chimed in, and he said, "Hey, you should have Eric in a in a brief overview describe what the like what a true donk is because I know there's a lot of discussion <laughs> about like Tampa or Miami. It's kind of like the Cuban sandwich, right? Who who made it first? But can you just break down for the listeners on what an actual donk is? So, all right. Well, that's, uh, that's uh, wherever words, you right? go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a big thing. You know, everybody sees a car with big wheels. Like, oh, it's a donk. No, that's not what a donk is. A donk is a Chevy Chevrolet Impala Caprice or Bel Air 71 through 76. It's a specific body style of car. And uh, in South Florida, the, the, the car culture for the donks is ridiculous. Like if you have a shop in South Florida and you don't have a donk in it, you're not relevant. Yeah. But it's like uh, having a VHS know, I, store I, right I, now. Who's really running those? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's literally one of the, you know, if everywhere you go in South Florida, there are donks everywhere. So, you know, I have, I do a lot of mail order stuff for those cars I literally have guys from all over the country shipping me parts to build them for those cars. And it's like, as much as I hate to admit it, you know, uh, 10 years ago, if you would have told me I'd be working on a lot more of these cars than ever, I would have laughed at you, you know, those in that era, it would have been Porsches and Escalades. And now it's, uh, you know, we'll have a brand new Ferrari and five donks. So, you know, it's, uh, 
it is what it is, man. You know, we, we, we roll with it. So, yeah. And the one thing I'll say about you is I, I can tell, like, like you said earlier, like you, you had one of those career defining moments where it was a quick wake up call. You had to go, yo, sink or swim. What am I going to do here? Am I going to go work for another guy? And you followed your passion all those years and you wouldn't, you wouldn't have a long list of, you know, uh, a list for people to get into your shop if you weren't doing hella good work. Yeah. I mean, I can honestly say, you know, um, my, you know, my, my, uh, my mini truck background is basically what, uh, what put me where I am today. You know, I have no problem saying that, you know, the, the, that community supported me for so long and they still do. And, uh, you know, all the guys that I grew up with in the era of having all the mini trucks and the bagged and body drop trucks, I am still close to this day with quite a few of them. You know, like we, we, we talk daily and weekly, whether it be on Instagram or face to face, you know, that's still my, you know, my, uh, fam. my tight knit group of friends, you know, it's like a lot of the, a lot of the club guys down here, you know, like people don't know that, you know, Tom Bennett, myself and big John at one point, we were all roommates, you know, uh, you know, Tom, Tom owned the house always, but you know, we all, we all lived with Tom and, uh, you know, it was, uh, it was fun, man. We had a lot of fun in those days and we're all still close. So, yeah, that's good shit, man. Well, I can't thank you enough for taking the time. Of course, uh, Eric crying, negative camber, uh, I would again tell everyone, encourage you guys check out advanced audio concepts with a C. Uh, we'll be sharing some of the throwback photos, some of the different things we've saved over the years, but do we salute you, man. And thank you again, Eric, for taking the time. Yeah, absolutely, man. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, brother. Have a good one. All right. You too. Yo, yo, it's a wrap. I got to thank Eric Cryan for sitting down with us here at OLP and really shedding a lot of light on different topics, including things I've always been curious about, including the movie that his truck was in. And I want to share with everyone, I was able to find more information on that. Eric and I have sent text back and forth, and we're going to share probably for the first time via social media in terms of anything related to our truck scene, a part of the trailer. And I say that because there is just a couple of frames where the truck is in there, which is freaking awesome. So we finally got down to it. The movie did come out, and I'll be sharing that via social media, Facebook, Instagram. So be on the lookout. I want to thank our title sponsor, Scraping the Coast, for the continued support. We'll be out there the third week in June 2024 for Scraping the Coast 2024. Remember, Scraping the Coast is in the Mini Truck Hall of Fame. It's that awesome of a show. This marks three weeks in a row, even with the holiday. I put the pedal to the metal, and although this is not a video episode, it was still three weeks in a row, so I can't thank everyone enough for the support. If there's anybody out there that you think would appreciate this content, send them a text, send them a link. You know, it's that simple. Share it on Facebook, share it on Instagram. However you do that, it really helps us out. And again, I can't thank all of the uh, supporters enough. Rest in peace, Josh Pascal. What a good dude. Again, go to asphaltarmy.com. You can buy the sticker. The stickers are $5 a piece, but if you buy two, you're only paying $1 shipping and all of the money goes to Josh's family. So thanks, Tony Moore and team at Asphalt Army that stepped up to do this. It's a great thing. And um, it's a it's a great way to try to put a little bit of positivity on a very sad situation and, and help the family and, and friends and whatnot. So, again, thanks for all the support. Keep it locked to OLP via social media. We'll see you. Hopefully, you're going to pre-register. I think today's the last day if you're in day one for Eastbound Get Down. Hopefully, they extend it out. And put some of those Christmas movies on, some Home Alone, some National Lampoons, and enjoy the family time. We'll hit you in two weeks. We've only got a couple episodes left for this year. We're going to keep the pedal stomped as we get sideways into 2024. Last little treat here. Biggity Mike the Mayor, I don't know what he was talking about, but let's roll into it and then we at ya. Peace out, everyone. If your woman tries to say that she's celibate, that's when you pretty much... You go back to the prenuptial agreement and you say, nowhere in here, it says, <laughs> what did you say when you, what do they call them, vowels or like, Hannah, you want to buy a vowel, <laughs> valve or valves? 
and you basically say your valves and you say for better or worse through <laughs> thinner or through thicker through stick thicker than a sticker what was your money <laughs> truck wedding or something yeah 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 thicker than a sticker it was something <laughs> like that but it is what is it you say hannah i want to buy a valve and then you go yeah. up and you say the words or whatever and then nobody says anything bad and then you just go something about kiss <laughs> kissing or something <laughs> kissing cousins yeah you are from ruskin <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Shannon lived there for a short period of time, too.